Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin, Lecturer in Computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate Pearson's correlation coefficient, R, and we're going to do it by hand. So first of all, let's take a look at some sample data. Over here on my left-hand side, I've got the results uh, for 10 students who have taken a test uh, where their 20 questions are asked, and these are the number of correct questions that were correct in the 20 questions, and I'm going to designate that uh, as my X series of values. And my Y values are the uh, score for the attitudes to te taking tests by the same 10 students. A maximum value here possible is, this is out of 100. And I'd like to be able to determine if there's a correlation between the uh, number of questions a student would get correct in a test and their attitude to taking tests in the first place. Remembering, of course, that correlation is not causation. Now what I'm going to do to you do this is I'm going to calculate R, Pearson's correlation coefficient, and the formula that I'm going to use, there, there are several, but uh, this is one I like, it's relatively straightforward to work out. It's equal to the sum of each value of x minus the mean of x, x bar, multiplied by the uh, each value of y minus y bar, the mean of y. I'm going to divide that by the square root of the sum of each value of x minus the mean of x squared, multiplied by the sum of each value of y minus the mean of y squared. So you can see that there are several components to this, and I'm going to build these up step by step. So let's start out by working out x minus x bar, so I'm going to set a column for that up here. And then I need to work out y minus y bar, so I'll give that into the second column. And you can see I need to multiply each of these by each other before I sum them. So I'm going to need a column for x minus x bar multiplied by y minus y bar. In underneath, uh, you can see that I'm going to need to sum up the x minus x bar squared. So I need a column for x minus x bar squared. And I need a column for y minus y bar squared. So let me draw in some lines here. And so each time I'm going to do a correlation calculation to determine R, uh, this is the setup that I need. So in my formula, the first thing I'm going to need is the mean of x, x bar, and the mean of y, y bar. So x bar and y bar. Now an average is an easy enough calculation. Um, I've got 10 values here for x, so add those 10 up and divide by 10, and that gives you a mean of 15.6. And similarly, when we do the y's, the mean of y is these 10 numbers here added together and divided by 10. And when we do that, we get a number 79.7. So we have our two means, and we have all our values for x, and we have all our values for y, so now it's time to work out step by step each of these values here. First, let's work out x minus x bar. So for each value of x, I need to subtract the mean from it. So the first value is 17, and I'm going to subtract the mean 15.6. So let's go ahead and do that. That's equal to 1.4. And you'll notice, just for uh, the speed of calculations here, you will notice that I need, over here in the, one of the right-hand columns, I need to take the square of that number. So while I still have that number on my calculator, let me go ahead and square it. And that gives me a result of 1.96. And as I, later on I'm going to be adding up all of these numbers here, I'm going to just add that to the memory of the calculator. My next value is uh, for x is 13 minus the mean. So let's go ahead and do that. Minus 15.6. That's equal to minus 2.6. Again, square that value. Gives me a value of 6.76. And add that to my memory. Let's move on to the third value. That's going to be 12 minus the mean. So 12 minus 15.6 is equal to minus 3.6. Square that will give me a value of 12.96 add that to memory. And then I keep doing that for each value here, for x, and each time I have a value for x minus x bar, square that value so as I have my uh, x minus x bar squared column filled in over here. Now let's concentrate on y minus y bar. So the first value of y is 94, so we need to subtract the mean of 79.7 from that. So let's go ahead and do that. And first of all, don't forget to clear your memory when you're doing this. Um, 94 minus 79.7 that's equal to 14.3. And as with the x's, you can see I need to take the square of that number. So while I have it on my calculator, I'm going to square that number, and that gives me a value of 204.49. And uh, add, add that to memory as well, because I'm going to add all of these up. My next value for y is 73, so let's subtract the mean from that. 
73 minus 79.7 is equal to minus 6.7 and again I need to square that value it gives me a value of 44.89 and as with the x's I'm going to keep doing this for each value of y uh, to subtract the mean from them and then square those to fill up this column here on the right hand side the last piece of work I need to do uh, in calculation here is I also need to determine x minus x bar multiplied by y minus y bar. So that's just going to be each value in this column multiplied by each value in this column. So the first one here, let's do that. So that's going to be 1.4 multiplied by 14.3. That's equal to 20.02. Um, add that to my memory for a new calculation. My next one is going to be minus 2.6 multiplied by minus 6.7. So that's going to be 2.6 uh, minus multiplied by 6.7 and minus, and that's going to be equal to 17.42. And I keep doing that for each value of x minus x bar multiplied by y minus y bar. And when I do that, I should get a nice um, neat column of figures like I've already prepared here. I have all my values for x minus x bar, all my values for y minus y bar, the, each of these multiplied by each other, x minus x bar squared, and y minus y bar squared. And in my calculation for r, it's these three last columns are the important ones. So I need to take the sum of each of these. So the, the numerator in my, cal in my r formula is the sum of x minus x bar multiplied by y minus y bar. So that's going to be the sum of all of this column here. So the sum here is equal to, when I add all of that up, I get a total of 134.8. This uh, the sum of x minus x bar squared is this piece of the formula over here. So when I add all of those up, sum of those, I get 42.4. And finally, the sum of y minus y bar squared is the sum of all of these. When I do that, I get a total of 1206.1. So now I can I am ready to fill in these values into my formula. So r is going to be equal to the sum of x minus x bar multiplied by y minus y bar, which is this value here, so that's 134.8, divided by the square root of the sum of x minus x bar squared, which is this figure here, 42.4, multiplied by the sum of y minus y bar squared, which is 1206.1. .1. Um, so let's uh, work this out st step by step. So this is going to be 134.8 divided by the square root of, let's multiply those two figures together. So it's um, 42.4 multiplied by 1206.1, and that's equal to uh, 51,138.7. Uh, and so I take the square root of that, and that's going to be equal to 134.8 divided by um, 226.139 rounded, uh, which is equal to, when I work this out then, um, 134.8 divided by 226.139, that's equal to uh, 0 0.596. So R is equal to 0 0.596. So this is my correlation coefficient, which of course has to be between a value of minus 1 and plus 1. And I've got a, a plus value here, which tells me I have a, a positive correlation. So as x increases, so does y. And the correlation coefficient here of 0 0.596 uh, is not that high, but it does show a moderate to strong correlation. A value of 0 0.6 exactly would be considered a strong correlation. So I have some evidence here that there is a correlation between uh, the number of questions that a student will get correct and their attitude to taking tests. So that's how you calculate Pearson's correlation coefficient R by hand. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.